we're going to learn to do today is we're going to learn to make a couple programs using loops in Python. First, I'm going to go into Python. And I'm going to open up Python Idle. Okay, we're going to make a program called Practice Loops first. So I'm going to go File. And I'm going to go New Window. Now I'm going to go File, Save As. And I'm going to save to the desktop a program I'm going to call Practice Loops. Dot .py So you've already used Python's turtle to draw many shapes. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a loop to draw a square with the turtle. The loop just means that you won't have to write out the forward and right functions many times to create each side of the square. All you'll do is you'll write each function once. Then the loop will make the turtle repeat these functions until it has drawn the shape. So we're going to start out from turtle import. And then I'm going to type uh, my for code for i in range 4. So what does this mean? We've just created a loop here. A loop is a block of code that repeats a specific number of times. Okay. Looping is also called iterating. Iterating means repeating. An iteration is one cycle of a loop. A loop is like a function. It's just a tool that programmers use to simplify code and make it more efficient. So here we go with a for loop. A for loop is just a kind of loop that iterates through a block of code a specific number of times um, until something happens in the program. In this case, we're going to stop the I when it reaches the fourth iteration, the fourth loop. It goes through this loop four times. So now we're going to tell it what, what do we have, want it to do. We want it to go forward 50. And uh, turn right 90 degrees. All right, let's save it and run it, see what it looks like. So you can see that it, it drew your square for you. It just repeated going 50 and then turning right four times, and that made your square. What if we change that range 4 to 12? Would that be any different? Let's check it out. File save. And let's run it. See, it just um, draws the same square three times. Okay, programmers use for loops when they want to know, when they already know how many times they want a block of code to be repeated. So here we see in Python the range function here can be used to set the number of times a for loop will repeat or iterate. Okay, The range function here uses integers to generate a list of numbers. The range function accepts many different kinds of arguments, but of course the simplest argument is a single integer. So what do you do if you want to make the turtle go fast or slow? Well, one way you can make it go slow is to put the speed of 1. That's the slowest speed it can go. So let's save it and run it and see what that looks like. So there you go. It's a very slow draw. That drew us a square, right? All squares have 90 degrees angles in their corners, right? The same as with rectangles. 
And remember, an angle is a measurement in the degrees of the distance between two lines at the point where the lines connect. I know that we can uh, make this an equilateral triangle. Um, so let's comment this out. What we mean by commenting that out is I just put a pound sign in front of this. And what that does uh, is it just makes that a comment. You can always comment out lines of code when you want to make Python run that program without that part of the code. But you don't want to really delete that uh, code completely. And this is really helpful when you might want to use the original code again later. So remember, um, you can change the number in this function here to do a different angle. So let's make an equilateral triangle. Let's go left this time instead of right. Equilateral triangle, what's the angle? The angle is 120 degrees, right? Okay, let's save it and try it out. So there's your equilateral triangle. Now just like the square had four sides the same length, an equilateral triangle had um, three sides the same length. That's why you could use a, a loop to, do, to draw them. So let's do another figure here. Let me um, comment this out. And this time we'll go right 150. So what's this one going to produce? Let's look. Go file save. And let's run it. Twelve-sided star. Isn't that cute? Really good for the holidays, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw us a second turtle. Okay? Um, Python uses a form of programming called object-oriented programming. In Python, a class is an object that can be used to make copies of itself. Each copy of a class is called an instance. So in Python's turtle program, Turtle is actually a class, it's not a function, uh, even though it's got parentheses after it. So it looks like a function, but it actually is a class. Uh, class names are often capitalized, so this is, makes it easier to tell a class and a function apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tur second turtle after this import command. Now, you see we have the turtle is capitalized. Well, that's common. That's how you can tell what's a class. Let me get, put some space in here. What's a class and what's a function? Classes are capitalized. And functions generally are not. So the first time you use a fun, uh, turtle function, such like forward or shape or color, um, the Python will create an unnamed turtle instance for that turtle class. And every turtle function that you use after that targets the unnamed turtle instance. So targeting the unnamed turtle means that the function will be applied to that unnamed turtle. This is why a new turtle isn't really created every time you use a new turtle function. So um, you can create a second turtle by declaring a variable name and assigning the turtle class as its value. This creates a new instance of the turtle. So that's what we have done here. We've created turtle2 as a new instance of the turtle. And it has that variable name. So this new, new turtle does not replace the unnamed turtle. And you can use uh, the new turtle's variable name without the turtle functions like forward and circle to move, the, uh, um, to move that turtle. But the way you have to do that is add the variable name to the start of the specific function separated by a period. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make the second turtle uh, make it square. So we're going to click right after the first turtle does its stuff. And we're going to go put, make the turtle 2 do its stuff.
And we'll have them make a right angle turn. We'll save it and run it. So see they both end up in the same place, but there were two turtles working there. So you had turtle one and turtle two, even though the turtle one was not named. Well, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to make the different cycles of the loop change slightly. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to comment out the first turtle here. So I'm going to click in front of the forward and put my pound sign in front of that, and I'm going to click in front of right and put my pound sign in front of that. So now we're going to change this program significantly. I'm going to take this range and I'm going to um, make that 50 iterations. Now if I'm going to go 50, I don't want a speed of 1 because that's the slowest. 0 is actually the fastest, even though you could go uh, 1 to 10 and 10 is faster. 0 is the fastest yet. Okay. So now what we've done is we're making it go 50 times. But now what we're going to do is we're going to change that forward from 60 to I. So it's going to get a little bit bigger each time. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to save it. And we're going to run it. You saw making those squares over and over again, but it, it gets one pixel larger every time. And the reason it does that is because we're increasing how big um, that line is by one every time it goes through the loop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to play around with the hello by variables uh, assignment that you did in section three. So open up your section three and go into your hello by variables and open it up. Right click it and click edit with idle. Okay, now I'm going to save it with a new name, file, save as, and I'm going to open up my section 4, and I'm going to save it there as loophello.py. Click save. Just like we group the individual letters together to form individual letters functions, we can write a hello function. So we can group um, everything we've done to make the word hello. We can make that into a function using uh, the same idea. So the way I create this hello function is to come all the way down to the end. And right over here, uh, right above color width, I make my definition. I define hello. I'm going to make it caps. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, delete the next line and I'm going to highlight all of these for draw hello. And I'm going to click my format menu, which you can't see, and I'm going to click indent met region. You've done this before. See here's a format indent region. That's what I pushed. So now I've got to add, delete this blank line here. So now I can save this. Now to make it repeat, 
I'm going to have to come over after this hello line and I'm going to have to add my new code. Now I'm going to write for I in range. Oops, all caps. For I in range 10. I put my function. Save it and run it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the letters. Many different ways you can change the letters. Um, like here they're showing you can change the positions of the letters. But in this particular way, we're going to change the code. We're going to make the letter lines thicker with each cycle. And then we're going to rotate the letters so they rotate around a single point. So obviously, if we're going to change our program to make varying widths for the letters, we're going to have to comment out our pen width command here so the user cannot um, change the pen width. So we're just going to put a pound sign instead of the, in front of the pen width command here. After you uh, change this command is you have to comment out the other pen width command down here. Right here. So we have to comment that one out. So now we're free to add that code. So let's come down to the code we just made. And after this, well, we just add the width i. So this will increase the width 10 times. So now if I want to spin this by one degree with every turn and see how that looks, I can just add right here for that and put in an i. So let's save this and see what this looks like. Once again, you can't see much difference initially. Okay, there you go. Okay, what we're also going to do for assignment two is you're going to uh, open up the um, Hello World assignment for the last thing. Okay, you come to the Hello by Variables func uh, assignment and you right click and you edit with idle. Then you do the same thing as you've done before. You go in front of pen width and you comment that out. Then you go down your code to where we see pen width again. And we comment out that code. Just like before, I call this hello. And I indent this whole thing. Let me bring this up. I go to come over here to format. And indent the whole region. Then I take out those empty spaces, right? Okay, so I want to make a couple enters here. And that doesn't coming out, so I'm going to backspace. And now I'm going to put my for loop in here, correct? Let me pull this up so you can see what I'm doing. 
So I write, write as four, oops, still caps, four I in range, 10, right? With my colon. So I'm going to run my um, hello loop. So I go with I and uh, right I. I'm going to save this and run this. Now you see I got a syntax error there. It tells me that this is wrong, and of course it's wrong. You know why? It's a definition. I forgot to put def in there. So I write in def. And so now it should work. And I'm going to um, save it. And I'm going to run it again. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set these where the user can only change the colors because this is not what you want. But um, that's what basically what you do is you just change those those things to this one form. You can submit your finished product, all three files, uh, for this assignment. And you're done.